all my life I've dealt with obstacles. That's all life is anyway. You're trying to, whether you have a physical disability or not, you're, you're a series of overcoming obstacles. Some things are a little more inconvenienced than others. Yeah, when I was in high school, at, uh, or in school, for the first grade on, at uh, Warfersburg, Pennsylvania, um, at first it was one school. We had one through 12 grades. And once we got a little further along, we got a second school where you had uh, first through uh, nine in one building, one through eight rather, and nine through 12 in another building. But every place you went, there was a considerable walk. And of course, at that point in time, I used wooden crutches with braces that went from the bottom of my feet to up under my arms. A full brace, it was very hard. I was a slow moving character, I couldn't. And it took a while, of course, kids were always in a hurry. We were all friends and grew up together and liked to do things together. And uh, I couldn't keep up with the bunch. And I don't know where it started. Nobody ever asked him to do it, but one day, Earl grabbed me under the arms, Earl Hendershot. This is one of my, he's my first cousin. He was born on November 22nd, I was born on the 17th, so we were very close in age, and always been close from the time we were born. He says, don't worry, Lenny, we'll get you there. And he grabbed me under the arms, and he told another neighborhood kid from Pigeon Cove to grab my legs. And somebody else picked up the crutches, and Lord, I was as big as Earl. And he said, let's go. I said, you, you can carry me. He said, let's go. And over the course of the next 12 years, I don't have a clue how far, but Earl Hendershot had to carry the back end of me uh, hundreds of miles. <laughs> no matter whether it be to the playgrounds or out for a fire drill or to the bus, whatever it may be. Uh, and I tell you, without Earl Hendershot, I'd be sitting in the corner with my nose pressed against the glass watching the world go by. And Gary Hess and a few other friends. But but it was never even a, a, a second thought about it. It was a way to, here again, it may be because of our upbringing, you didn't dwell on what you could and could do. You try to figure out how to get it done. And Earl's a very ingenious person. He's And it it just made sense to him. Let's go. Let's not talk about it. Let's do it. And uh, and he was big enough and strong enough, thank God, that he could do it. <laughs> and it it was uh, nobody ever questioned it. It was just the way you went about doing things. We go out to the playgrounds and play ball. It was a matter. It wasn't well. Lenny can't play as well. Okay, Lenny, you hit and I'll run. And the kids would take turns running for me. So it was a matter, it wasn't, it was just, it's a matter sometimes when we, we always have a pickup game on Sunday that time. I'd take my braces off and I'd crawl. And I'd play on the ground, I know. I did that all the time. I would sometimes become the pitcher and sometimes play third base and get run over a lot. <laughs> but that was part of the process. My buddy in Hancock was going to Maryland. And I had the guidance counselor that telling me all the time I had to go to a little school. Because there's no way I could get around. So I applied to the biggest school I could find to see if he was right or not. And it's terrible, but that's the way it was. And I was accepted at Maryland. At that point in time, I had never walked up a step in my life without the aid of a banister. And when I pulled up to my dormitory, Talbot Hall at the University, and I saw 14 steps going up with no banister. I was terrified. No one. <laughs> and, uh, What'd you do? Well, I looked for a way. Uh, there were some shrubs along the one wall we built. I mean, Buddy and I, Buddy and I, we trim the shrubs back so I can get to the wall of the building and use the wall to hold to. And we made a way. 
but it was, uh, it was, that was scary. We played a preseason game in the late 60s in Portland, Oregon. We played the Philadelphia Eagles. And they had, had an old stadium there that they were, it's called Pioneer Field. It's a combination of baseball and football. And they were in the process of refurbing it. New seats, new everything, new press box and all that. Well, we played the game in the middle of this process. So there was an awful lot of construction going on. It's a night game. In order to get to the press box, at that time, you had to go up this um, construction type stairwell made out of two befores and two baits that went up the side of the building, some three stories. And then you get to the top of this, to the roof, then you walked across these planks to the edge of the press box. And then you actually crawled down the roof of the press box, down its ladder to get in the darn thing. So you had to be a half monkey just to get there. And of course he had all these pigtails with, with lights kind of lighting the way. Well, I was okay going up. So I get to the press box and we do our thing. The game's over, it's time to go home. And I'm with Frank Wall, the general manager. A fellow named, a fellow named Alex Hawkins. He was one of our radio team. Later wrote a book. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And Alex was quite a character. We were all leaving together, so we got across the place. And I, was, I started a little bit ahead of them, because I was slower. So I said, oh. they said, we'll catch up to you. Well, I can get to the top of the steps. Instead of going down forward, I decided I'm going to back down. Because if I slip, I can grab to something. So I'm backing down these steps. I put my weight on the banister on the right side and the banister collapsed. And all this piece of lumber falling to the street. It evidently wasn't nailed properly. Supports weren't right or whatever. And I'm falling and in the process, my one foot caught between the riser and the step, it hooked. And, and there I am hanging my ankle upside down, top of the stadium and here came Frank Wall and Alex, he had grabbed me and pulled me back up. So after that, they referred to me as a second story guy. <laughs> but they say my bananas in it. But it's just one of those freak accidents. It wasn't an accident, I wasn't hurt. I had a swollen up ankle, sprained a little bit. But <laughs> sure, it made me change religions.